In this video, we will illustrate three examples major categories of wind projects. As these correspond to the vast majority of wind energy in terms of installed capacity, we'll first discuss central grid projects and talk about possible wind penetration, energy storage issues, and other considerations important to developers. With many remote communities dependent on increasingly expensive fuel for the electricity provided by diesel generators, Isolated grid wind is now becoming more and more a serious alternative and we will discuss how wind energy can be used in this context. Finally, we will also look at applications for small off-grid turbines that are typically used with batteries for many critical loads in remote applications for which we will provide various examples. Central Grid Wind Energy Systems – Examples from Europe and the USA the photos on this slide show two wind developments that are tied to the central grid. On the right, the 9.6 megawatt coastal wind farm at Lolland, Denmark is shown. On the left, an early wind farm in Palm Springs, California is seen. Although their output varies with the wind speed, wind turbines integrate into the electric grid relatively easily. Contrary to popular expectation, no storage systems are needed to buffer the varying output of the turbines. Rather, the grid accepts the wind-generated electricity when it is available. Electric grids are designed and constructed to accommodate electric demand that varies over time as consumers unpredictably turn loads on and off. Wind turbines can be considered negative loads that also vary with time. The same systems that compensate for changes in the amount of electricity that is being demanded from the grid by consumers can also compensate for changes in the electricity being supplied to the grid by wind turbines. Furthermore, when wind turbines are dispersed over a large geographic area, their net output to the grid tends to change less rapidly, since winds in one area may be dying down as winds in another are picking up. Obviously, there is a limit to how much wind capacity can be installed on a grid. If wind turbines were the only form of generation on the grid, then there would be no electricity available during calm periods. But the experience of Denmark and parts of northern Germany indicates that this limit is, in fact, quite high. 17% of Denmark's electrical energy comes from wind power, and this has not required the construction of any additional spinning reserve, that is, capacity specifically meant to compensate for the output of the wind turbines. While the limit may be different in other parts of the world, there are few locations, if any, where the intermittent output of the wind turbines is presently a real obstacle to their profitable use. Studies have indicated that wind generation integrates especially well into grids which have significant hydroelectric resources, such as the grids of the Canadian provinces of Quebec, Manitoba, and British Columbia. Hydro reservoirs act as a form of storage that can be drawn down during calm periods and preserved during windy periods. Wind power is protected from several types of risk associated with conventional generation, and thus is a valuable addition to a portfolio of generating sources. Obviously, since the wind is free and locally available, wind power is not subject to rapid and unpredictable spikes in fuel prices. But just as importantly, wind is a modular scalable technology that can be put into place quickly and in any increment desired, from a few hundred kilowatts to hundreds of megawatts. Many conventional power plants, and nuclear power plants in particular, can only be built as large developments requiring many years to plan, construct, and put into operation. The 5 to 10 year planning horizon that this imposes raises the risks that capacity will be built in anticipation of demand growth that does not materialize, for example due to an economic slowdown, or that unforeseen changes in the prices of fuel and electricity will make the new plant unprofitable. On the other hand, the 2 to 4 year planning horizon required for wind power is much more manageable and less subject to forecasting error. Wind farms containing scores of machines having a combined capacity of hundreds of megawatts are clearly very large and are spread over a large land area. It is important to recognize, however, that the turbines and associated access roads and electrical lines occupy only a very small part of this land. In fact, about 99% of the land of a wind park is available for other uses, such as agriculture. Thus, the land requirement for wind power is quite low. 
While large wind farms are a common approach to wind development, it is possible for individuals, businesses, and cooperatives to own and operate single turbines or a small number of dispersed turbines. For example, 80% of Denmark's turbines are owned by individuals or local cooperatives. In Toronto, Ontario, Canada, a Citizens Renewable Energy Cooperative has recently installed a 700 kilowatt turbine on the city's Lake Ontario waterfront. Isolated Grid Wind Energy Systems – Examples from India and Canada Many communities, such as those found on islands, in sparsely populated regions of Canada and Alaska, and in many developing countries with limited infrastructure, are too far from the central grid for a grid connection to be financially viable. Rather, these communities have a local isolated grid, typically energized by diesel power generators. The cost of electricity generation is high. Diesel fuel is expensive, transporting it to the community inflates its cost, and the generators themselves are often quite inefficient. Wind turbines can reduce the consumption of diesel fuel and the cost of providing electricity to these communities. The fluctuations in the output of the turbines and the electricity demand are compensated for either by the diesel genset itself or by dump loads, that is, loads, such as water heaters, that can be turned on and off over a short time scale without impacting the consumer. Turbines that operate on isolated grids must be especially robust and reliable and should have minimal maintenance requirements. Often, the communities will have limited materials and expertise to dedicate to keeping the turbine in good working order. Sending parts and specialized labor to the community will be expensive. On the other hand, the operator of the isolated grid must have a realistic plan in place for conducting the required regular inspections and maintenance. Otherwise, even the most robust and reliable turbine will eventually fail. The photos on this slide show two very different isolated grid applications of the same model of turbine, a 50 kilowatt machine. On the left, a crew is installing the turbine as part of a small wind park for the isolated grid of Sagar Island in West Bengal, India. On the right, the turbine is providing power to the very remote community of Rankin Inlet in Nunavut Territory in the far north of Canada. Off-grid wind energy systems, examples from the USA, Brazil, and Chile. Numerous small electrical loads are found at locations far from the electricity grid. These include remote villages, resorts, homes and cottages, telecommunications and monitoring equipment, navigation aids, and water pumps. When these electrical loads are found in windy areas, a small wind turbine can be a much more cost-effective source of electricity than either grid extension or a prime power diesel generator. The wind does not blow all the time, so some form of energy storage is required for loads that will not tolerate an intermittent source of power, that is, the majority of loads. Deep cycle lead acid or nickel cadmium batteries are typically used to buffer short-term lulls in the wind. This adds some complexity to the system and, especially in the case of lead acid batteries, increases maintenance requirements and periodic replacement costs. One load that can tolerate intermittent power, and thus does not need batteries, is a water pump that feeds a storage reservoir. The reservoir, in effect, fulfills the same role as the battery. In the past, multi-veined windmills powered mechanical pumps. While this technology is still used today, it is also possible to use a wind turbine to generate electricity for an electric pump. Wind turbines can be used in conjunction with other power sources in a so-called hybrid power system. These systems will typically include a battery for short-term storage, a fossil fuel power generator for long periods when there is little wind or unusually high loads, and possibly even a photovoltaic array. The advantages of hybrid systems are several. First, they combine the strengths of each of the power sources Wind power and photovoltaics are expensive to purchase but have low operating costs. On the other hand, fossil fuel power generators are relatively inexpensive to buy but costly to operate. In a hybrid power system, the fossil fuel power generator reduces the size of the turbine required and the turbine reduces the fuel cost of the generator. Second, the solar resource utilized by a photovoltaic array and the wind resource utilized by the turbine 
are often negatively correlated on a seasonal basis, such that when one is not available, the other is. Third, having power from multiple generators reduces the risk of complete loss of power should one power source fail. Hybrid power systems are associated with a higher level of complexity, necessitating more careful design, more time for installation and commissioning, and more involved operation and maintenance. As a result, they tend to be used for larger or more crucial off-grid loads. Three small off-grid wind turbine applications are shown on this slide. The one on the left is a 400-watt turbine providing power for telecommunications equipment in Arizona, USA. In the center, a hybrid power system provides power to an off-grid village on the island of Marajo along the north coast of Brazil. This hybrid system includes 50 kilowatts of wind and photovoltaic capacity, as well as a battery bank. The photo on the right shows two 1 kilowatt turbines that charge batteries for a remote school at Villa Tehuelche in Puente Reninas, Chile. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll explain how Red Screen can be used to perform wind energy project feasibility analysis.